before and it off the <laughs> Hello and welcome to the channel. For today's adventure, we're going to be heading to the Bavianskloof to explore one of its hidden gems and a favorite camping spot of ours, a place called Kudukaya. Joining us on this adventure today are the, all the usual suspects heading out in convoy from the wind farm just outside of Port Elizabeth. Naturally, the bikes get loaded too in case we find some nice riding spots. And with that, we head into the beautiful Langtuif through the quaint little towns of Hanky and Potensi. So apart from offering a great camping experience, Kurukaya's real attraction is its famous 10 pools, which can be found when you hike up the Esrefir Gorge that runs through the campsite, with the ultimate goal being able to hike all the way up to pool 10. And as you're about to see, this is no easy feat, with many having to turn around before inevitably getting wet along the way so we devised some clever plans to protect the valuables so we daily go to process is so okay the process is like next one on cigarettes not rocky so we're going to go on a car set it's smoking apparatus you see we're going to zip and need our cigarettes stick in the mouth we're going to put our hands on say face me well you guys are first I can let you before and you're off the cry yeah but like we're fine <laughs> and so with the valuables fully waterproof and the group adequately hydrated we embark on the first leg of the journey to get to pool one Okay. Is it weird that I can close see me at awesome it is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the first leg of the journey, just outside the camping area, follows the Esrefir with this blue pipe running alongside. This blue pipe used to be an old aqueduct that collected water upstream and then conveyed it down to the orchards for irrigation. The Esrefir, or Ice River in translation, lives up to its name. The water is cold all year around. And here we have a pile of rocks to the left. Backstory unknown. We've been joined by one of the indigenous groups, Almighty. <laughs> they started following us. Just when you thought this place couldn't get any better, there are dogs that live here permanently that accompany you on your hike or come visit you in the campsite. Now, this hike isn't what you'd call a walk in the park. There are some difficult sections and they tend to get worse the further you get. But it's very doable, especially up to the first pool. And from there, you just decide when you want to turn back. So just to clarify, this is not one of the pools yet. This is just a crossing on the river the pools are loosely defined as places where you need to swim to get over there. But as you'll see, Christy makes light work of almost all of them. Nice. Very nice. And suddenly, there it is. Now, to clarify, this pool, you don't need to swim to get past. But you can swim in this pool, so <laughs> I suppose the, the definition is loose. Most hikers will, however, need this rope in order to get up. <laughs> and some don't. Mufasa. Long, <laughs> the king. <laughs> 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 
nicely done. Pool 2 is not going to force you to swim, but you are going to get your feet wet. And with that, smoke break number one. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no price me, Tom. And so the gang starts wading <laughs> yeah. through the water to get to pool They've 3. They've grown up so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Directly off the pool too, we take a sharp left turn and now Sean is not excited about swimming this one. And neither is Christo. Now pool three is believed to be the first pool that you actually have to swim to get through. But Christo is refusing to accept that and he wants to show us a different way. Everyone stands back and watches in disbelief as Christo does the seemingly impossible. Are you guys seeing this? Sh yeah. oh! Well done. Well done. So upon seeing Christo oh make God. the seemingly impossible and not believing that they could do it themselves, everybody submits <laughs> to an ice cold swim. <laughs> Kazi oh, making his way across once everything's clear. The big rock at the end of pool 3 is smoke break number 2 and the first hydration station on the route through the pools. It's also a great place to soak up the sun and warm up after a long swim. <laughs> Our trusty canine companion, which we've lovingly christened as Bruce Almighty for unknown reasons, decided he was going to surprise everyone by swimming all the way up to pool 3. We never thought he'd make it this far, but we were quite surprised. After a quick debate whether we should help him or not, we decided we were going to let him go as far as he could by himself, which ensures that he is able to get back by himself. Christo managed to bypass the first part of pool 4 by rock climbing, but he wasn't going to get through completely. The clarity and visibility of this water is amazing. And bringing up the rear is the goose and T struggling to find their feet. At this point the hike starts getting really exciting. The sheer drops and cliffs all around. The rock faces and waterfalls that we have to climb up. There are always multiple ways of doing this multiple routes to take and it's interesting to see who goes on which route and who tries to climb up where. Shawnee and Tree planning their next move. Chris is showing us how to do the difficult climb. From pool 4 it's a short walk to pool 5 where we are going to test our climbing skills even further. Now originally there was a rope on that waterfall on the right that we had to climb up on but we have since found another route to the left where someone has kindly tied a rope to a tree and sees us climbing halfway up the mountain in order to get past this pool.
Christo wisely guides us through this section. It may a lost slipper, so kijk maar net dat je niks afskop nee, ze blijft. Mooi trap nee, bij lost slipper. Made it. From there we climb along the rock face for a while. How's the bobby on? Yeah, it's not all bad enough. Yeah. <laughs> Until we finally drop yeah, down to the riverbed again. Up, up. And another short hike to pool six. <laughs> <laughs> Now this is the point where you turn around if your swimming leaves anything to be desired. You really need to be able to swim to get through here. And the reason for that is it's a very long section, very deep, with sheer faces on each side. You have to be able to swim continuously through to the other side as there's very few places where you can stop and rest. T decides to drop out at this point and Christo and Goose joins us on the one part that you can stand and rest before the big swim. Champion. Okay. Yeah, Shawnee showing us what he's made of. All of us are swimming in single file as it gets quite narrow, but not so close that we obstruct each other's arms as we swim. Shawnee showing us his cheeky breaststroke, followed by Shri, the Goose, Kazi, and lastly making up the rear Christo. The swim can seem like it's never ending. Cherie no, sings us a song to boost morale. <laughs> the section used to be a lot deeper, but you can see some new sediment at the bottom from recent floods that they had. <laughs> Finally we reach the end. That narrow opening has got a rock that we can all sit on and rest after our swim. Shorty's feeling a little fragile. The swim has really tired him out a bit too much. So he needs to take a good rest before we continue. <laughs> to get to pool 7 we need to climb up a small waterfall which is slippery at the best of times. The whole pool is quite deep so there's rocks that you have to sort of balance on before you can get to this point. This can get even the most experienced climbers like Sari just realized. The goose is the only one in the group that can do this hike barefoot. She's showing us what she's made of. Shri also finding her way up the waterfall with Kazi on standby. Shawnee takes a small tumble and Kazi's there to give him a hand. Shawnee decides to call it at pool 7. So him and Shri are going to sit here in the sun, warm up a bit, take a rest and then they're going to be making their way back slowly. <laughs> now pool 7 is where the biggest, the most challenging point of the hike is. There's no shame in turning around at this point. Should you wish to continue, you're going to need to get up there which involves climbing up directly against the waterfall and slippery rock faces as the goose is going to demonstrate shortly Oops. Okay. Yeah. but before all that time for a group selfie so some of you might have noticed yes there is a rope which you absolutely will need for the first section, as Chris is showing us now. Followed by Kazi, who decides to send it and go through all the way up the face. Now the tricky part about this climb is it's not just steep upwards, but it leans towards the waterfall. So the more you use the rope, the more it sort of pulls you to the left, back into the water stream. Up comes the goose, or her turn. 
Zeus expertly navigating the waterfall with her bare feet. And up she goes. Now it's quite difficult to illustrate via a GoPro exactly how steep and how slippery these rocks are. As you can see, she's leaning back quite a bit on the rope there, which should give you an idea. Now the biggest risk at this point is slipping, falling down this rock face and potentially injuring yourself. As you can imagine, you're about three hours hike away from base camp. And at this point it would be quite bad to get injured. We leave the heavyweight for last, armed with my fallies, and I decide to take a different approach. Opting to go up the waterfall, making my ascent as straight as possible. Uh, heavily depending on the rope obviously getting up that way seems to work the best for me and then as if to make a mockery of everybody Krista comes up the side one handed making it look as easy as a simple walk in the park You underestimate him, he's a good guy. Once you get to this point in the hike, Pool 10 is a mere formality away. This is by far the most challenging point. And once you're over this, the rest of it is a slice of cake. We made a call to switch our cameras off at this point to conserve battery power for Pool 10 and then film everything on the way back. We finally made it to pool 10, just to rehydrate, rest and head back. Now for those of you curious to know why we can't go past pool 10, I challenge you to do the 10 pools and find out for yourself. Obligatory champion selfie. And then we head back. So we were able to get pool 9 with the battery yeah, power yeah. remaining okay, and the okay. goose going for a couple's jump. Parkour! Hindsight that pool wasn't deep enough for that jump. Because he's opting for a diver drop. So skipping pool 8 we get back to the descent on pool 7. This time the heavy man goes first. <laughs> Choosing just to sort of abseil down on my back. As before, with a tight rope, it sends me straight into the path of the waterfall. And there we go. The last section is slightly suitable for a cheeky slide. But Kazi decides to take that to the next level immediately. <laughs> and subsequently takes me out in the process. Goose and Christo showing off their rock climbing skills. She also manages to get a slide in. Parkour! 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 
we reached the point where we left Sean and Cherie. They've probably gone back to go find tea. And with that, we hit pool six in the long swim back home. We meet up with T at pool 5, but we haven't found Sean and Shree yet. Hey T! Lovey, what did you spring, eh? Thankfully, like two rock dussies waiting in the sun, we find Sean and Shri at pool three, and the gang is back together. We found Brucey waiting for us when we got back to the camp later that day. That evening we went riding bikes, put up fairy lights and we had a lacquer braai. If you like watching this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers!